Welcome to the show, guys and gals. I hope everyone's doing all right out there. Wow, why is my voice so deep? <clears throat> there we go. Let's that's, uh, that's not fool you guys and act like I'm a man or something. Okay. Welcome to the show, everyone. One's, how about this? One episode. I uh, should just redo this, but you know I'm a mess. Uh, welcome to episode 177 of My Blurred Opinion. It's always weird actually saying the title because... I know a lot of people do, but I just don't. I figured you'd know by basically looking at the thumbnail of the the image, <clears throat> the image. But uh, yes, there's been some changes in my life. Um, I will get on get into it in a, a upcoming episode here. But um, I appreciate you all for being with me, and um, you know nothing nothing's changing with this. Just in general, some other life changes, but we're good. We're strong, and um, yeah, nothing's going to break us. So let's get into this episode. Another really sweet guest. And um, we just need to keep on uh, putting out a positive message. If they don't want to listen, we'll keep screaming at them. Scream. Do you have anything to say before I jump into this episode, Balato? No. I just get stares. That's why I feel so alone. Um. Okay, guys. Let's get into this episode, and um, yes, stay strong out there, everyone. All right, guys, back here again. Um, we're just one. We're just kind of on a whim. We're just jumping into it. I met this guy off of Instagram. Uh, I found him. I was just kind of adding people, and I saw some things he was into, and I saw he had a disability, and just. A lot of things he, a lot of his uh, posts and things were just some things that were up my alleyway, and I just reached out to him, and we're just kind of, I'm just getting back from a restaurant, and he's just laying there in his house, so we're just chilling, and we're just going to jump right into it and knock it out. So, uh, hey, buddy, you want to tell us your name and like a little about yourself? Hi, guys. So my name's Ant Brian. Um, so a little bit about me. At the age of six years old, um, I, I suffered a brain tumor. Um, and doctors had to operate on that tumour to remove it. Um, when they operated to remove the tumour, I suffered a stroke, so I lost the use of my left side. Doctors said to my parents, I'll probably never be very active or ever walk again. Um, but 20 years later, I, I've ended up representing England at the World Championships, running 800 metres and 1,500 metres, winning gold in both. So I've kind of, my, my whole um, kind of, aim in life was to prove those doctors wrong um for sure i remember i remember after my operation sitting in the hospital and in the wheelchair hating my life wishing i'd never survived and i just kind of my i just wanted to push myself to try and achieve that was my main aim and goal what, what was your because you know for me like i it happened to me when i was a kid so i didn't really go through a lot of self-loathing until i got to like a teenager years <laughs> Um, but like, what, what was your kind of your bottom where you just finally, you had enough of all this and it kind of like, what was your turning point? I guess. Um, so I was very, very active and sporty and popular as a child before everything happened. And then my whole world was turned upside down. I had, I had to relearn how to walk. I had to relearn how to live life with one hand. Um, I remember after about a year, I was allowed to go back to school. And I was looking forward to going back to school to do, live a normal life again. And even though everyone did their best to include me in everything they did, for me, it just didn't feel the same. Right. And I remember, I remember at lunch times at school, at break times, teachers were worried about me going outside. So I had to sit in the classroom while everyone else was outside, mm -hmm. uh, running around, enjoying life. And I remember sitting in the window watching everyone. And I was wishing to myself, I wish I'd never survived. Why am I here? I hate who I am now. And I became, I really hate myself. Um, it was sport saved my life. Where it was, um, I, in my school, I was the only disabled kid in the whole school. And I, I was very shy and self-conscious and always wanted to hide away. I'd wear big coats to hide my disability. But when I was playing sport, it was all about, I'm not going to let the other person get the better of me. I'm going to show them what I can do. And, it just went from there. I just kept playing sport and kept pushing myself to try and better myself. 
Sure. Yeah, you had that athletic drive beforehand and just you kind of had yeah. to like ignite the fire again. Yeah, and then as I got older and I started going to the gym, I found that actually I might, I might not be able to use one arm, but the one arm that I can use is extremely strong. So I started training myself to do like one arm pull-ups, one arm deadlifts, one arm cleans, one arm clean and jerks. And I thought this was just average and normal. I used to be very embarrassed and shy in the gym. But then like big like big guys in the gym were coming up to me and goes, Bro, you're lifting some heavy weight, that's insane. I was like, Is it? It's like, Oh, you're inspirational, mate. So this kind of gave me that kind of pick me up, gave me that um drive to do more. So I did more weights, I did more training, I got stronger and actually started to think actually I, I can do things people told me i can't but actually i can sure yeah you had a lot of fuel and, and for i guess in the beginning it became you kind of whether you, you're basically your disability became so obvious like you obviously knew you were different but now everyone else knew you were different and maybe you were the butt of some jokes or whatever but at some point eventually you just started to do your own thing and people took notice of what you were doing and you became inspiring and you kind of flipped the whole script on everything. Yeah, I used to always hide my disability and try and hide and be a normal person. But as I got older, I realized that being different is a good thing. Like, if you put a 100 people in a crowd, people together, no one's going to stand out. Everyone blends in. If you want to stand out and be successful, if you want to be different, you have to be different to the others. So I realized, actually, my disability is my superpower. It's what makes me different to the others. It's what makes me stand out. So how can I use my different, my difference to be successful? So I thought, well, I'm going to push myself as much as I can with my disability and show others that if I can do it, then anyone can do it. So I started doing workouts and workout videos showing how I would do it with one arm, pull up how I would run with my disability and just show others that I can do it. And I started gaining more followers and I started doing motivational talks and people were like, whoa, you're amazing. And I was like, anyone can be amazing. You just got to show your own uniqueness. And everyone has a uniqueness. Everyone has something that stands out. you got to show off what you can do and be the most successful person you can be. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, it's something I've been like on. I've been on a huge journey the last couple of years, just tapping into that and, and what it is that makes me different, and what it is that like my disability can highlight in a positive way about me. And yeah, yeah, people's ability is negative. It's negative. It's negative. You can't do this. You can't do that. But you can think, okay, I can't do that. But what can I do? You have to look at look at the glass half full. Sure. Yeah, and and a lot of sometimes. I don't know how it worked for you, but a lot of times when people's voices that has echoed through my head for over the years, there might be something I repeat out loud to myself or just internally to myself. And it wasn't even my voice saying it. It was a teacher or someone many years ago who put me down and I'm just repeating it. And I'm like, wow, like I, I, I just kept, you know, playing this in my head over and over to the point where it became my opinion or became my thoughts. And you know, in order to defeat that, you really have to push yourself hard and you have to find the things that, you know, that keep you going. And, you know, that's some of the things I stress about on here a lot when I talk about mental health is just that find those little things that you're passionate about. Find, it doesn't have to be anything amazing or immaculate. Like just find something that you believe in, find something that you love. And that is another, that's just another reason to go on another reason to push harder to see another day just to see whatever it is that is that you're that you're into yeah because none of us know um how capable we really are we kind of sit in our comfort zones and take it easy take the easy route but every single person has an amazing huge amount of ability we just need to push ourselves to see what we can really achieve yeah, because we don't know what we're capable of. And again, as you had, you had doctors tell you you couldn't do things. And I've had many people tell me I couldn't do a lot of things. And yeah, you know, there's nothing better than when you can actually just prove them wrong, even if they don't directly know what you're doing. It's just because the reality yeah. is your voice is the one you're trying to defeat the most because a lot of what they're saying to you, 
you're kind of you have to actually prove to yourself if they if they're right or not. Exactly, and I find a lot of people have opinions and say, "Oh, you shouldn't shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, or you can do this, or you can't do that." But that's their opinions. That's not you. Like you do you and do the best you can do. And if they say you can't do it, prove them wrong and show you can. Yeah, they're just opinions, and they're not. You know what they say isn't. You know, always valid. It's not contingent on what you do. You are who yeah. you are, and and you know, no one really knows what you're capable of, including yourself. And you won't know yeah. until you you push yourself and you try hard. Um, yeah. Well, there, well, there was. A, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, buddy. There, 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 there was an amazing. Um, so something that really kind of changed my mindset was reading David Goggins' book. Okay. Um, oh yes, yeah. One one of his chapters was called "Be the Only." So David Goggins was um, doing the ultra triathlon and when he stepped up to the start line, he looked around and he was like, yeah, there's loads of guys and they've trained hard, but none of these guys stand out. None of these guys have trained harder than me. None of these guys, everyone just blends in. And then he looked to his left and he saw a guy in a wheelchair and um, this guy in the wheelchair got out of his wheelchair and just perched himself on the edge of the, um, the pier ready to dive into the water. And said straight away, he looks across at him and he goes, there you go. They're the guy. They're, there's the guy that is the only. Everyone else here blends in. They've trained hard. They've done the work. But this guy, he's the only disabled guy here. And he's put himself amongst all these. He is standing out. That's the only. And in life, that's what you have to do. You have to put yourself out there and be the only. Yeah, for sure. And it takes a lot of bravery just to do that. Like, I don't think a lot of people understand, like, we have, yeah, we have to be, we have to be like really in control of ourselves. We have to love ourselves. We have to really put ourselves through some sort of like mental war games where we have to say, Hey, like some Olympics where we just say, look, we know if we're going to put ourselves in this type of atmosphere, we know we may get some looks, we may get some laughs, we may get some judgment or whatever, but all that doesn't matter. We're still human. We're still going to live our life. And, and you know, yeah. I'm, I'm still going to do what I'm going to do and regardless of what anyone else says or does. And the thing is, you will never find out what you can do if you don't put yourself outside that comfort zone. You don't. I don't want to get... Um, so let's say I live till I'm 99 years old. I don't want to get on, sit on my deathbed and think back, ah, oh, I could have been something one day. I could have been something back then. I want to be lying there on my deathbed and think, Wow, what an amazing time I had. Remember when I did this? Remember when I did that? Yeah. But you don't be lying there in the end of your life thinking, oh, all those regrets. Yeah. I mean, you'll have some most likely, but the the, the yeah. smaller amount, the better. But you're totally thinking, yeah, I tried, I, tried, I tried that. And I thank God I tried that. It, went, it, it resulted in this and that. Yeah. You need to fail. I mean, that's the thing. I think we all... We're just so afraid of rejection. We're all afraid to, to, to literally fall. But when you actually do that, you do learn something from it. A lot of times, even more than the successes. Because you don't really yeah. know what you're capable of until you like you hit walls. And then you continue to find those hurdles and you jump over them. But at first, it looks like something that's surmount insurmountable. You could not get over. You can't get around it. And then you go, well... And that's that's the whole thing about being a person with a disability is that we have to find ways to get around things we have to find ways to assimilate to be normal in ways even though we'll never be normal so we have to find ways to live and and that's kind of the beauty about us is that you know especially when we do it we push ourselves and we go oh this is how i will do it just because that's not how you won't do it or, or you know a typical person with whatever you know legs or arms or eyes or whatever it is um, that's how they would do it. But it, like, I love the beauty in someone finding their own way in their own path and, and doing a task, even if it's something very small and, and, and you know, mundane. Yeah. I, I once spoke to um, an, an employer and he was telling me if I could, I, he, he said, I would employ all people with disabilities because the people with disabilities know how to problem solve. They know how to get around difficult times and they know how to work hard. Yeah. And I believe that we're also very, very appreciative because so few of us do work and, and so few of us are given the right opportunities unless we have to, unless we really, really fight for it. 
So I think we're so grateful. And then you give us a chance. We tend to show real gratitude and loyalty. Yeah. For example, with me, um, I, once, once I finished with my running, I became a personal trainer and I qualified as a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. And when I did all my qualifications, the instructors, the teachers were like, wow, you're going to go on to do great things. You're doing really well. You're really going to help inspire and change people's lives. So every job and interview I went to, I went to 30 different interviews. And my first interview, they were like, no, you you haven't got the image we're looking for. Sorry. Uh, The the next interview I went to, they were like, no, you're not what we're looking for. You haven't got the image we're looking for. Every interview I went to, they were saying the same things. And then um, another guy said to me, look, I'll be straight with you. You can't lift weights with two hands. How do you expect to teach others? Right. So the rejection after rejection after rejection, I kind of gave up. Um, and I went and got a job in a supermarket just selling food. And I really didn't enjoy it. On the side, I started to volunteer teaching exercise classes in a gym. But still no gym would hire me. Um, eventually, after doing volunteering for seven years, I'd learned loads of skills and built it up. Eventually, um, a job in reception in a gym came up. And it's not it's not what I wanted to do, but I got into a, a fitness industry. So I was on reception. I still didn't enjoy it. I wanted to see, teach exercise classes. And eventually, there was a new manager that started, and he said, you, you do all this, and you do that, and you've done amazing things. Why are you not in the gym? I was like, no one's ever given me a chance. I was like, I, I can hear what else does, but just no one thinks I can. So he's like, no, no, that's not right. So he got me, he gave me a chance in the gym. So I've been working in the gym for three years now. And um, I started up my own exercise classes and they're fully booked every single week. And it's thanks to him. And I work really hard just because I owe it to him for giving me that chance. Yeah. And those are the people you remember on your journey. Like you'll never forget him. He, he, yeah. he stuck his neck out for you and he didn't care about what you were or what you didn't have. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because for him, I'd still be working in a supermarket. Sure. I mean, you don't know that 100%, but you probably wouldn't be doing what you were doing after that. So, yeah. yeah. You know, but it, that's all it takes is one person or one certain instance where you're just like, man, that changed my life because I went in yeah. this direction. But you could have you could have easily told him, no, no, and no, I'm good. and. I'll stay with the grocery store, and you could. Have I still think, I still think, even the fitness industry today is still not. It's kind of very fickle, and it only looks at the like kind of the, the strong, the bodybuilders, the athletic. It doesn't really cater for disabilities. So, for example, um, when I teach my first exercise class in the gym, I was covering an exercise class. Uh, the teacher was away, and it was fully booked. So I walked into the room of thirty people and I was like morning everyone my name's Aunt Brian I'm teaching your class today blah 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 and these women just looked looked up at me and went what you're teaching I was like yeah 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 I've taught for I've trained for years and I've taught classes blah 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 and as I was getting the stereo ready um, I turned around and got it all ready and I could hear them all talking behind me and they're all just saying no 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 I'm not doing this class I want to go to the gym I actually want to do a workout today um, stuff like this. And then as I stood up and turned around, out of 30 women, 20 of them had walked out and left. Now, I, I was I was in, so here I could have had two options. My first option was, I could have thought to myself, I'm a terrible trainer. No one wants to believe in me. I'm rubbish. I'm, no one wants to train with me. Or my, my second option was, this is what I thought to myself. I looked up and I saw 10 people had stayed. And I thought to myself, forget those that have gone. I want to give these 10 people the best class they've ever had. So I really pushed myself. I was like, come on, come on, come on. I've been extra enthusiastic, running around, giving them loads of exercises to do until they're red in the face. And after that class, they, they all came up to me and goes, wow, that was one of the best classes we've ever had. And I did this for the next few weeks. And after the few weeks, word was spreading around the gym. And My class was getting busier and busier. And now my exercise class is so busy that even people are complaining that they can't get onto my class. (laughs) So what about that? Even when you get those hard times, don't give up. Show them what you're made of and what you can do. 
and they'll they'll learn to go be learn, learn from you and you'll become a leader to others yeah and those 10 probably got a little more one-on-one you got to build more relationships and you know they looked at you as like okay like well, i mean they, they at least gave you a chance so like if you would have given up on those 10 people, who knows where your classes would have been because you might not have been able to build because it's all about word of mouth and, you know, social yeah. media and, and all that. And so, yeah. It's hard on my- Yeah. And, and you, yeah. No, be interested in me. Yeah. And again, you could have failed all 10 of them if you, you know, by just walking out or just, you know, being lackluster. But you, you put the time in and you showed them what you were capable of and they were like, wow, okay, because... I remember when I first started working with a guy who was totally blind and again, I can see some um, and I realized working next to him, I was kind of in a bad place mentally and I wasn't really putting in, I was working okay, but I wasn't putting in the effort that I should have. And I I started to get competitive because I'm like, look at this blind guy. Like he's going to kick my ass and he's going to outdo me. He's going to make me look really bad if I don't start actually trying. And it, it motivated me. And again, I have a disability, so I and a very similar one to him. So it's like I, I know, you know, I don't look down on him, but it was just I was down on myself. But the fact that he was doing so well with what he didn't have and he was in a worse position than I was and he didn't care. It was like, OK, I need to get off my ass and actually bust my ass and do this. And uh, I'm sure that's what you did for them, just in the, in the sense that they didn't have a disability and they were even more in the in the dark but but they saw what you were capable of it's like okay this guy's gonna give his all like we need to at least try yeah i think the biggest thing is a lot of the time we are our own worst enemy like we we talk to ourselves we talk bad bad to ourselves so yeah if things go badly straight away that our worst enemy is ourselves we'll look in the mirror and we'll say bad things to ourselves like oh you're worthless yeah. You can't do that. can't do that. And the thing we need to stop doing is stop talking to ourselves so badly. So if you catch yourself talking to yourself badly, say so say to yourself, Stop. Imagine you have a friend in a situation. How would you talk to that friend? You'd say great things to give them encouragement. So whenever you're putting yourself down, imagine you're talking to your friend and start giving yourself good advice and encouragement instead of bad advice and put yourself down. Yeah. I mean, that's good advice. I mean, I think a lot of times your mind will plant seeds sometimes as well, where it will say something to you like, Oh, you know, you know, if you try to do this, this and this is going to happen. And then you go and you fall on your face and whatever you were trying to do, instead of just kind of going, ah, crap, like that didn't work out. That's when your mind goes, see, told you. Oh, it just wasn't going to work. And then it just, it gets a little darker and your mind just continues to just kind of overwhelm you. But yeah, if you don't take time to just kind of hit the pause button and just kind of look outside all of this and just go, okay, what just happened here? Have we been here before? Because uh, sometimes we get into familiar situations where we would, we would immediately start panicking or get depressed, but we didn't have a very fit. We didn't have any real uh, evidence to kind of, or any real experience to deal with it. But w- when you can kind of hit the pause button and look around and go, okay, I have been here before. How did I deal with it then? Okay. I dealt with it this way. All right. Well, I don't want to do it that way again, because that didn't help me out. That just, I just I sat in my mental filth for a longer period of time and it took me longer to get out of it well, maybe I should try it this way. And the more you do with it, the more, you know, life becomes a little easier and, you know, life isn't as sad. And even though you have little moments where you you go backwards, you tend to uh, be able to shake it off quicker because, you know, you're finding ways to combat it. Yeah, we need to be kind to each other and help each other because we all have different experiences in life. So if we can share what each of us has been through and help each other, then the world would be a better place. Yeah, and these are like really cheesy sentiments, but like they're cheesy because they get overused and they're not, you know, they're not backed up. No one actually, a lot of people don't really go through with them, but like we should treat each other better. You know, everyone yeah. should be kinder and we should just try to build a better, you know, a better community and we should just, and because eventually it, it'll spread, And but we don't. We, we tend to take too much, I mean, we beat each other, ourselves up internally and then, 
because we are self-loathing and because we don't like where we are, we take it out on the environment or we take it out on every person around us. And, um, you know, and that's why it's key for, for someone like you just to be out there and showing what you can do. And, and regardless of what you have or don't have, you're still making the best of a situation, regardless if it's a shitty one or a good one. And you, you know, obviously the, the cards you were dealt um, weren't the greatest, but you're still living. You're still happy. Um, you have moments of sadness and, and anger, I'm sure. But overall, like you're you're doing great with your life. So why can't anyone else? Yeah, it's true. And just kind of do the best you can do with your own life. That's what I try and do. And try and be, but obviously I do have negative times but I just try and show the positive times if I can. Yeah, I mean, I only show the sad and the negative sometimes because I advocate as far as mental health wise. And I like to show every bit of it, not just the happiness, because it's sometimes disingenuous if you just only show when you're happy. Because you're not, you can't just help people who are, if people are already happy, you're probably not going to help the happy people. Like, I'm trying to help people who are feeling lonely and feeling down. Like, having someone on like you. Who, there's someone out there who's had a tumor and someone who has part of their body is going through paralyzation and, and they're struggling with their inner self. And, you know, I want them to understand that, like, obviously, there's a lot of hard times ahead, but it does get better. Definitely. There's going to be hard times, but you have to persevere and things will get better. Uh, it's, it, when you if When you hit rock button, there's only one way to go and that's up. Yeah, oh, there's that's that's the greatest part when you're in a corner and there's there's no there's nothing behind you to go but a wall. There's only way to go is forward, and, and that's sometimes it's hard to see that because you're looking at how far you have to go. Because you're maybe let's say you're the metaphor is that you're at the bottom of the steps and you're looking up to where the door is and it's miles and miles away, but at least you can see something and and there is. That, you know, there is one step and then there's another one after it and you just keep going. And at some point, time goes by and you're like, oh, okay, I've already been doing this for a month or two. Like for me, I can't believe I'm still doing this podcast three years later because years ago, I probably would have given up on it because of my inner struggles with myself. And I would have told myself, what's the point? Because it's not successful enough yet. Um, but I'm still doing it. And then I take that and I start translating that to working out and trying to get into shape. Um, and you start to just use certain tools that you just kind of develop by just trying and just getting up because you're going to get knocked down, but you keep getting up and all of a sudden, yeah. And every time you get knocked down, you bounce up quicker and it doesn't, it hurts less. And it, it, the, like, people think, oh, if it's not successful, then it's a failure. But, it's, but if it's not super successful, then you've got to take the good things out of it. You've met loads of new interesting people along the way. It does open new doors by trying new things, even if you don't make it all the way to the top. Yeah, and a lot of times what doesn't seem like a success in the beginning might be in a different way, like especially as you, if you grow as a person. And again, like this may sound cheesy, but you start if you grow as a person from it and you realize you're stronger, there's times where I've gotten hit by life and then the next day goes by or I'm, I'm, it happens currently and I'm just like, damn, how are you still dealing with this? Like, I don't understand how you're smiling. How are you, how are you bouncing back so quickly? And I realized like, Oh, I'm, I'm growing. Like I'm, I'm stronger now and I'm this and I'm that. And, and I'm like, okay, like I did get something from this. It's just, it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't what I intended, but not everything is like, it's, there's people will go to something. They hated it. And then they found their true love, but that's not what they were going there for. They were going there for a new job or, you know, something. And, at the end of the day, they found something else they didn't even intended to get. And that's you're not going to have those experiences unless you do that. You have to put yourself out there. And one of the things you definitely have to try to get out of your comfort zone because that's the place where you're kind of stuck. That's it, definitely, yeah. And the thing is of Instagram, you always see, oh, those people are having a great life. Those people are doing great things. I mean, um, like for me, if you might see my Instagram, I'm always in the gym, I'm I'm always running, I'm always doing this, I'm always doing that. But that's what I'm good at. I'm good at pushing myself to achieve things. But also I have negatives. As well. So probably the downside for me is all my life since a child, I thought, oh, no girl is ever going to be interested in me because of my disability. So 
I always had that thought. Even now, like maybe 20 years later, I think girls are still not interested in me because of my disability. So I've never really been in a proper relationship. So I might be smashing it in the gym and doing my training and stuff, but relationship-wise, there is no, I have none because I still think no girl's going to be interested in me. Because, so that's something I'm working on at the moment. I need to build my confidence in my own self. So I still have those kind of negative thoughts. Yeah, and that that but that's again that that's kind of what I was referring to earlier about pointing out some of the negatives because just because a lot of people will look at you and want look at all you've overcome and go like wow like he must be perfect like he must have everything together he must be just in such a great place and he's never angry he's never sad he never has insecurities and that's the furthest thing from the truth and it, but it motivates you more like now you've just found another goal you found something else to to get a hold of and and to push yourself like you you've already made it so far but you're still nowhere near you want to be like for me I've always said like I'm trying to get as close to perfect as possible knowing that I'll never obtain perfection but try to get as close as I can like I want to get to somewhere where I find some happiness and and I want to be secure and comfortable with myself but I still have insecurities like I'm still far from where I want to be I'm just ahead maybe to some people because they're not as far ahead as, as where you and I have made it through. But like I said, there's to, to me, no matter how much I've accomplished, no matter how far I've gotten in life, I still have ways to go. Yeah, exactly. It never ever stops. Like you, you, you achieve a goal, then you're like next goal, achieve a goal, next goal. Cause as soon as you stop, then your growth stops. You, like you got to keep living, you got to keep growing, you got to keep achieving. I'm always looking to what can I do next? What can I do next? Yeah, and that that's busy. Yeah, when you lose the ability to like to want more, and you lose the ability, like, and if you, you don't have goals, um, yeah, you just become lost, and and life doesn't seem as important. So you're just like, oh, well, what's the point? Tomorrow's the same as the next day, but. You know, when you have that kind of mindset, like life does become pointless. And that's how so much that's why a lot of people end up ending their life because they just they feel there's no purpose in living, uh, unfortunately. And, and that's that's like I said, that's why it's why we do what we do is just in our own ways. We're just trying to help people because there are people, you know, you got to think of where you were many, many years ago when you were first self-loathing in a wheelchair and you just saying like, I don't, why, why did I survive this? There yeah. are people going through that right now. And, yeah. You know, and, and, and they need, they need someone to believe in. Like you said, like when, in the business that you get in and in, in the athletics you get in, you don't see many people in your position. Um, you know, or people like you actually getting to the top and actually succeeding uh, there's not much representation. And so it's it's like, you know, there's not many superheroes, regardless if they're wearing capes and comics or they're just people like you who are a legitimate person out there who's athletic and in great shape and you're doing so much and overcoming so many odds. Um, but you're also not wearing it on your shirt. You're just like, hey, like, this is what it is. But it's very noticeable yeah. to a lot of people. But this is me. I don't I don't see any difference at this point. I can't I can't I can't sit there and think about it because I'm competing. So um, for you to be who you are like you know there may be one of you right now but you know hopefully by the end of your journey there'll be hundreds to thousands of you yeah especially as through my teenage years I, I was very kind of down had a lot of suicide thoughts like I said I don't want to live anymore I don't want to live anymore why am I still here sure. but I was sitting down to my, and talking to myself I was like look you can end your life and that be it you, you, you'll never know how your life would ever turn out or and I sat down and said this to myself I said or we can just smash life as much as possible do the very best I can and if I still get to a point where I still hate life then yeah that'd be it. just finish it there but don't end it without even trying so I said that to myself and every time I do something I just go and do it and I do it without fear I remember going to a, a sports camp and we were doing hiking through the rivers and there's a 40 foot cliff and everyone's jumping off the top and I saw everyone doing it. I was like, I'm going to do it. I was the first disabled guy to do it and I had no fear. I was just like, I run and jump. I did it. I was like, whoa, that was cool. And I started learning actually 
throwing myself into things. I was like, oh, actually, I can do this. I can do that. And the more I started learning that I could do, I was like, actually, I'm starting achieving things. I'm my actually my life probably isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Whereas if I'd ended my life back then, I would never have found out. Yeah, yeah. Because if there is a place you go when this is all over and you can look down on, and maybe you can see where the future would have taken you, I'm sure there'd have been nothing but just absolute shame and regret and you know hatred for yourself even more so. It's like when you're watching a film. So like, you might not think, "Ah, oh, this is a rubbish film," but then you keep watching it because you want to know what happens in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some things so, sh- surprise you. So don't don't end your dreams short because something's going to come up and in, in come sooner or later. So keep going, and something will come up. You want to know what it is? Just keep going. And something will come up. For sure. Um, what, what What is it that, like, how does your your um, disability affect you, like, on a daily basis in today? So I can't use the left side of my body. So I can't use the arm. And my leg is weaker than my right leg. So um, when I do daily activities, I just do it one-handed. So I get dressed with one hand, wash with one hand, cook with one hand, play PlayStation with one hand, um, do weights in the gym one-handed. Um, everyone's pretty shocked to see how many things I can do. So on my Instagram and YouTube, I put loads of videos on how I live life with one hand. And they actually, I was really embarrassed to post them, but actually they got thousands and thousands of views and hits. And they were like, oh, that's incredible how you do that. So what I was embarrassed of actually impresses other people and I never thought that would be a thing but that was really good um, so I ca- I have to wear a brace on my leg to support my ankle and that allows me that gives me more support so I can run Okay. but with that my ankle would, would give way and snap so with a brace I can run and I can I've now trained so much that I can actually run faster than most able bodied people Sure, that's awesome. Is, is there any, so there's, there's really nothing you can do with your left arm at all, right? So I can't. I can, if so, I have small use of it, but I have to really concentrate and think about it. Okay. So I can't hold weight. So I would tie an ankle weight or tie the weights around my wrist, and I would concentrate and just use the bigger muscles. So I can't open the hand, but I can use the biceps and the shoulder small amounts. So I use weight and try and get that muscle stronger. Yeah, because you never know. Maybe, maybe at some point you unlock some muscles in there. It's. I had a. Yeah. I had a friend uh, I had on the show, and he he lost a lot of uh, any kind of dexterity to any of his muscles in his legs, and and one day he just his toe one of his toes just started wiggling, and then and then. Like his, he got some feeling in like one of his butt cheeks, and then it just like it started to spread eventually, and he started to get some some real movement, and he he thought it was never coming back. Um, yeah. So you just you in never the, know. The brain and the human body is absolutely fascinating. It um, it's just constantly evolving and always trying to heal. So never say never. I've had friends that were told they will never ever be able to do this or that again. And they've ended up doing more than what the doctors have ever thought. Like doctor said to my parents, he'll probably never walk or be very active again. I'm now faster, a faster runner than 90% of the population in the world. I'm, I can do more workouts than most people now. Uh-huh. That's awesome. And it just kind of shows, it shows you that the doctors don't know everything. Only you know you. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Cause I mean, I, I mean, I just got back from the eye doctor not too long ago and I was talking to one of the, the nurses and, you know, she just was like, oh, I can tell you, you just kind of know all the protocol. And it's like, yeah, I've been doing this for 30 years. Like I, I know my body, I know what I can and can't do. And I know, you know, I've just done this for so long. Like you don't, you don't have to waste your time. Like, you know, it's not to try to put you down, but it's just like, I've been doing this and I don't, you know, I know me Yeah. and yeah. And yet, and that's the thing. Like when people tell you what your limitations are, you figure them out for yourself if they're real limitations. 
Like I know I can't yeah. drive, so I just I, I've just said that I can't drive because of my vision. But that doesn't mean I won't try to drive like a golf cart or something. I just won't drive a car. Or that doesn't yeah, well, yeah. Well, she is kind of might have self driving cars, so you can have your own self driving car. We have them. It's just you still have to have a license. But yeah, maybe one day. You know, that's it's. That, it, that, yeah, that, that's very very potential. Um, kind of we'll kind of wrapping up. One, um, do you have anything you need to promote? Because I want you to promote yourself as best you can. Um, I do have an Instagram page and a YouTube channel and a TikTok page. Um, it's called Ant Brian Fitness. So it's A N T B R Y A N Fitness, and I post all my kind of workouts on there. How I live life with one hand. If I'm doing any running, so if you want to follow or subscribe or support me or give me a message then i'd be happy that would really make my day that'd be amazing yeah because that's how i found you i follow you on instagram and um so yeah please follow him i will put it in the description when the episode does come out and um lastly do you have any kind of advice for like the younger anthony like the young version of you um, some, think- someone out there that's struggling that you, like how you were Embrace being you. Embrace being diff- being different is your superpower. Whatever you are into, whatever you do, use it as your superpower and be the best you can be. Don't give up and don't let people tell you what you can and can't do. Aim to be the best version of you you could possibly be and always aim higher. That's awesome. I, I Thank you, buddy, for, for seriously, for doing this for me. I know it was last minute and whatever, but... Uh, I hope you want to keep in touch. I'd love to support you in anything you're doing. Um, having me on. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, you keep doing what you're doing. You're uh, you're an awesome guy, and uh, you're you're definitely a, a role model for people with disabilities. So keep being you. Thank you. I'll see you soon. I will see you soon as well. I'll see you, buddy. Bye. Yeah. All right, guys. Another one. Another one. Okay. Um, yeah. This was, I really just jumped in this. I just went to dinner and lunch, doctor's appointment, lunch, grocery store. Told him two hours, and that was 3.15. I got back in the house. So 5.15 would have been two hours. I got back in the house at 5.15, and uh, it all it all really worked out. So um, he's just a good dude. So thank you to him. Thank you for got thank you guys for being on the show. I'm sorry my brain fog is kicking my ass. <sighs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna go get a workout in. He's motivating me to work out more, even though I've already been doing that, but you know, shit. I just I wanna get in a shape. I'm just wanna feel good about me. So um but yeah, thank you guys again for this episode and you listening. I appreciate you all. And uh we will be back next week. Yeah yeah. I don't know why I said that. Why did it bullet? Where'd you go? Oh, he's up in his cat tree. Um, so, yes, if you heard some noises in the background, he got a crumpling, whatever, it's just him. Um, but he's allowed to do what he wants. He's the man. Ooh, let All right, guys, see you next week. A be the boy. Oh, what is he doing now? Bullet? What? Oh, I see where he went. He is not going to the bathroom. Delicious, right? All right, see you guys. Thank mm-hmm. you.